makes a few arguments talking to atheists, right? Yeah. And one of the points it makes is, um, did the universe create itself? Yeah. And the answer to that is? I don't know. The answer to that, I would say, is no, because it means that it didn't exist. It came into existence to create itself. And it doesn't make sense. So it's making us think, ponder about, OK, where did the universe come from? So it must be an important question. So I'm asking you, from some, can you get something from nothing? But isn't that same question apply to if a creator created the universe? Yes, because you could ask the question, what, who created God? Right. Yeah? Yeah. Or what God created God? Yeah. Yeah. And then they would ask a question, who created the God that created God? Right. That created God, that yeah. created God, that created God. Very difficult so, to get to the beginning. No, no, very simple. Yeah. Because the Quran in chapter 112 says that, um, gives a four line definition of God and says God is uncreated. Okay. So my argument was going to be, can something come from nothing? So you need something which is outside of the universe, which has intelligence, has will, um, has power, that's put the universe in, into motion, yeah. that created it. Yeah. Because the leading science at the moment says that the universe um, is finite, so, and it came into existence. Right. So I'm saying, if it came into existence, it's not gonna last forever, it's finite, yeah. then what put it into existence? You could argue Big Bang maybe, yeah. Yeah? and then I'll respond with what caused the Big Bang. Yeah. And then that would bring me back to the uncreated creator. Do you like it? So you think the, you think the universe will, will end eventually and then Definitely. God will remain? Yes, yeah. yes, 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 without yeah. a doubt. And I think that, look, at the end of the day, God wouldn't have created us purposelessly. Everything you do, there's a purpose behind it. Yeah. yeah? Um, you can't give an example of something, anything that's been created that doesn't have a purpose. Yeah. So I'm saying God created the universe, yeah. God created life on yeah. this earth yeah. and then will leave us aimlessly like a va vacant landlord. Yeah. So I'm saying no, God created us for a reason, told us what that reason is through a perfect scripture which you're holding in your hand. Yeah. Now, that's another argument the Quran makes that if you have any doubt, yeah, bring something like it. Yeah. This book is from God and God has preserved it. Yeah? There's no mistakes in it. There's no crookedness. Okay. How many religious scriptures, how many books in the world can claim to be perfect and actually challenge you to find a flaw in it? And I'm saying, as someone who's born and brought what up in this... What do you mean by flaw? Contradiction, mistakes. Okay. When it talks about a subject, it shows weak knowledge. Okay. I'm even putting the bar even higher. Okay. Does that make sense? Because I'm saying it's from God. God understands all subjects. Yeah. So... Um, Whenever it talks about a subject, it's an expert on that subject. Talks about embryology, it's an expert on that subject. It talks about things that it's impossible for anyone to have known 1400 years ago. Okay. Especially an unlettered man, the Prophet Muhammad, who the Quran was revealed to. Yeah? It's talking, it has prophecies in it. Yeah? All the prophecies have come true. So What's your name by the way, sorry? Craig. Craig Ridwan. What's Ridwan. your question, Craig? So who... The theory is Prophet Muhammad just found it? No, no, no. The okay, theory who wrote is. It down? The theory is it was from God to the angel Gabriel okay. to the Prophet Muhammad okay. who, who spoke it. Spoke it? Yep. Um, because to who, who, the, the people who around him. Wrote it down. Yeah. Yeah? Um, who memorized it orally. So our primary source of evidence is an oral transmission. We have For over 2 million. 200 million people who have memorized the Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. And that's been in the languages revealed in. So from Arabic to English. Now, who wrote it down? If you travel with me to a university in Birmingham, yeah. they have a carbon dated Quran in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay. Which is my second resource. What year is that? It's like 600? Um, good question in the life of the Prophet, so it was 1400 years ago. Okay. So about 600 years after, 500 years after Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then that's something tangible you can test and see that, look, it's been verified to be in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. But regardless, we've got 
um, over 200 million people have memorized it word for word in the language the Prophet Muhammad spoke. He spoke Arabic. The Quran was very. He spoke it, and then the version in the in this. Would you say Birmingham University? Yeah. If you Google uh, Quran Birmingham manuscript, yeah. you find a Quran verified by non-Muslim academics yeah. who've said that look, it's carbon dated in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. Okay. Interesting. How do you feel about what I've said so far? Intrigued. I didn't think uh, Muslims, um, what do you call this, have missions. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do, we do, because the fact of the matter is, um, it's a strong element, compulsive part of element, some uh, scholars would argue, as Muslims, that um, it's a communal obligation, minimum. Okay. Let's go start from the minimum. It's a communal obligation for people to actually propagate the truth. Because okay. the fact of the matter is, um, we're living in a country where um, currently it's non-Muslim, predominantly non-Muslim. Yeah. And we're living here, the least we could do is introduce them to the truth yeah. by giving away free Qur'ans, by having friendly dialogues. Because yeah. even though, alhamdulillah, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, yeah. um, okay. in Europe and England, um, there was a... I, I was doing some research on this matter. And they, the census the organization they reached and they said that look in 2051, England will be a predominantly Muslim country. Yeah. Is that because of birth rates or immigration or just because people aren't practicing Christianity anymore? Like, I would say a combination of all of those things, okay. but more so in regards to non-Muslims actually embracing Islam. Because yeah. ironically, a lot of people would say it's um, due to birth rates, but it's actually due to the fact that non-Muslims are embracing Islam. Um, it's the fastest growing religion through people adopting it really? in Europe, okay. America. Two thirds are women who are embracing as well. Okay. So I find that quite, quite interesting statistics. Okay. What's the Quran say about women? And different Muslim countries have sort of different views of women and women's roles and how strict they're supposed to be. Give me an example of because I think a lot of it is kind of cherry-picked, like misunderstood. I think in Islam, women's role is example of in the Quran is in regards to and even because what happens is we take the Quran as authority and we take the actions and statements, hadiths of the Prophet or the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, and he he consulted his wives when making decisions. Um, at the end of it, it's very clear a man's role and a woman's role, yeah. but I can't imagine that when you look into it, you would see that it's yeah. kind of suppressing yeah. women. Yeah. If you want to give me an example of well, something you've multiple heard. Multiple wives, so he has multiple wives, Prophet Muhammad? Yeah, the Quran mentions that you can marry. They say that's all good? It's all good. Okay. Let, me, let me tell you what the Quran says. Yeah. yeah. Um, chapter 4, verse 3. Have you memorized this? Of course. <laughs> of course. So for a man, it's very important to memorize this it specific is? verse. No, okay. okay. I'm oh, wondering oh, you oh, this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, four marry. Verse three. Yeah, chapter four, yeah. verse three. Yeah. Marry two, three, four women of your choice. Only if you can be just to them. Okay. Do you have an issue with that? Because uh, the fact of the matter is... I don't. I have a feeling that some of the women yeah. might. Ironically, it depends on what women you speak to. Yeah. 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 Most women who are married don't want to share their husbands. Right. Yeah. However, when you ask single women, divorcee women, yeah. single mothers, Very would poor you, women poor women, yeah. would you be willing to share your husband? Yeah. Would you be willing to go into a co-wife um, co relationship? Maybe marriage? ones who don't like their husband, yeah, happy to share. Yeah. <laughs> no, some, some women, they like the idea of actually that kind of part-time having somebody to babysit, someone to, who can, they can share, like, so they now have to give 100% attention to the husband. Okay. Ironically, I was just having this conversation with my female colleagues at can in my workplace. Can women have multiple husbands if they can be just to them? No. Why not? Because it's not in a... There's many, many reasons. Does that make sense? Um, and it's just not in the nature of a woman. Because God Almighty, Allah, knows um, the creation and knows what's good, what goes with the nature of a man and what goes for the nature of a woman. And Practically speaking, if you had a woman who had, let's just say, four husbands, yeah. Yeah, 
<laughs> then what's going to happen? She gets pregnant. Can she meet all of the husband's needs? Yeah, she meets all of the needs, hypothetically speaking. Yeah. Can her body handle it? Yeah. Hypothetically speaking, she meets the needs, the body can handle it. Then she gets pregnant. Then what happens? Yeah. The other three men are just on standby yeah. for somebody else's. Wives. Do you know what I mean? Then it's going into a whole other yeah. kind of worms. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then it's like, can you manage that? Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? So I think pragmatic Islam is very pragmatic, and I think when it comes to the whole ruling of uh, men having multiple wives, it works for a society where um, the ratio to men and women, there's, there's many ways to make the argument, yeah. but I don't personally think a man marrying um, multiple women, giving them rights somewhere to live, taking ownership, responsibility, responsibility over the child that's coming out of that relationship yeah. is suppressing a woman. On the flip side, with all due respect, we live in a country where a man can marry a man, but a man can't have two wives. Yeah. Let that sink in. Yeah, no, I, I think that's strange too. I agree. Yeah. Um, was Prophet Muhammad Christian before he was given this, he was, he was given this verse and that's, that's when he decided to change or what was, no. what was his religion? He wasn't religious. He was religious in the sense that he prayed to God. He was, he was a monotheist. Okay. And Jesus Christ, because you have to remember, Jesus Christ, oh, Christian, sorry. Christian what, is somebody... What about Prophet Muhammad's parents? Were they religious? No. They weren't religious? No. Um, there's hadiths that mention in regards to them not dying upon belief. Um, and again, with Abraham, yeah. his father, was somebody who created idols, um, so he was a he was a disbeliever. I'm new as well. Sorry, I don't even know what Magman is. So. You should. Are you don't you live around here? No, 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 no. Oh. Today's the first day we're here actually. Oh, from? Yeah, um, East London, oh, okay. Stratford. We're normally in Stratford. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was just like more of a follower of. Abraham, I would argue. Abraham. There must have been a community that he grew up in that they were believing something. Right? Don't think so? Because, again, that, that's the point I was going to make. Um, a Christian is someone who believes in Christ. Yeah. yeah? Buddhist is someone who believes in Buddha. Yeah. yeah? Um, Hindu is a geographical example. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Muslim uh, means someone who submits the will to God. So I would argue. Um, but before this existed, like yeah. this was written, this, uh, this was revealed to Prophet Muhammad yeah. around 600. But Islam existed before this was revealed. Because oh. Islam existed from the very first man, which was Adam. Oh. So it's an article, as a Muslim, yeah. you cannot enter paradise until you believe in Jesus Christ. As a messenger sent by God. Okay. You cannot believe, you cannot enter paradise <laughs> unless you believe in Moses as a messenger sent by God. Okay. And Abraham and David and yeah. Solomon and G, um, Adam and all the prophets in between. Yeah. So that's that's what we believe. But the but the let's say in the year 400 before Muhammad showed up. Yeah. The people who were following this let's call it Islam must have believed in Jesus as a man as a prophet, but not as the savior. Is that you're saying there's a group of people who were kind of in this gray area for a few hundred years? So ask that question again. Jesus was around year zero, right? Yeah. So let's just take the year 400. Yeah. These people who were, let's call them Islam, because Islam has always existed, and they believe that Jesus was a prophet. Yeah. What did they believe in the year 400 before Prophet Muhammad showed up? Did they believe Jesus was not the savior, I guess? They couldn't believe that. They... Were they Jewish in the sense of they knew that Jesus existed, but he wasn't they, the they, they probably, what happened was they affirmed the belief in Jesus Christ as a messenger sent by God. Yeah. And what happens is Islam is a continuation of the monotheistic religions. Yes. So it's saying that, look, there's only one God. Yeah. Um, God sent the prophet Jesus. Yeah. So they testified to that. And then when the prophet Muhammad came, um, he's the seal, he's the finality of the prophets. So going back to your question, before he came, what did they believe? Yeah, yeah. They believed in monotheism, there's one God, and God sent the messenger, Jesus. 
that makes sense. If they had detailed knowledge, then they would say that when Jesus Christ left the people and said, look, I'm going to leave you now, or the comforter won't come, they will know the comforter to be the final messenger, the, the Prophet what? Muhammad. Comforter? comforter. What's that? Um, comforter. comforter is, as a Muslim, I would argue that's referring to the Prophet Muhammad in the Bible. So they had a sense that this, the, yeah. the final prophet is coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even the Jews now still believe the final prophet is coming, coming but they come, reject yeah. that's the prophet Muhammad. And you, the, and the you Christian, the sorry, prophet is prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Is it the savior? Is that the same? Would you call him the savior, or you just call him the final prophet? I will call him the final prophet because so I, I think had no chance to be a prophet. No. Even even like Christians. That's quite <laughs> Even Christians, they will refer to me as a prophet. They will believe they've got family members as prophets. I'm like, I wouldn't even call myself a messenger. I'm, I'm portraying a message, but I'm not a messenger of God. Uh, I'm just sending, like, portraying a yeah, message. Just a regular message. Yeah. yeah. So I think for us, the Islamic theology, when it comes to prophets and messages, is they need a seal from God. So you making a claim, yeah. it's like, how do no, you know? I'm not going to make a claim, but I'm going to be open. Maybe I'll get a message, you know? Maybe not. <laughs> All right, now, I need to go. for you to get that message, right? Yeah. Um, I would say that, look, we've asked to verify that someone is a messenger sent by God. Yeah? You have to know the character. Yeah? Um, what they're teaching can't contradict what's been revealed to them. What's been revealed to them has to be perfect, has to be perfectly preserved, the message has to be perfect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you don't um, believe in a lot of Mormon uh, Joseph Smith uh, getting, uh, getting nah. revealed to him? No, nah, not at all. No, nah, I don't either. So I feel like I've spoken a lot. What, yeah. What's the takeaway from this? Like, how, how do you feel about Islam? I feel good about Islam. I don't know very much, so that's what, what, what do you need to know? about this. What I do you want need to read to know? this. Okay. Read this. What do I need to know? Um, what, what, what would you need to believe this is from God? Ooh. What's your criteria? Ooh. Um, I haven't thought about that. I'm not sure. Think, think about that's it. Pretty, that's a hard question. Think about it, because the thing is, how are you going to know it's a book from God if you haven't even defined it? Yeah. Does it sense? So for me, like I said, it has to be perfectly preserved. The yeah. message has to be perfect. There can't be any mistakes or contradictions in it. Yeah. There has to be prophecies in it. He has to talk about subjects and not make any mistakes. Does that make sense? Um, he has to show profound knowledge in subjects. Well, I have to believe that there's a God to start, and I'm hoping that some of the things that you referenced help me get there. I would say <clears throat> the Quran argues about to believe in God. To, you don't even have to look far. Look at the creation. Look at yourself. Yeah. Well, that's okay. not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the sense that, look, like, what do I mean by ourselves? Like, not the behavior, not your concepts, not the existential question, yeah. but in the sense that, look. Um, not all the things I'm thinking all the time. No, 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 no. Just, 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 just in regards to, like, I was having this profound conversation with my martial arts teacher. Okay. Yeah. And he was saying that, look, if we didn't have a thumb, we'd be in trouble. We'd be in trouble. Literally. <laughs> not, not in a martial arts sense, yeah. but in a sense that, like, we wouldn't be able to do our buttons, yeah. let alone create anything. Yeah. Look at all the technology. Yeah. Does it make sense? And Monkeys I'm, have thumbs. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> then it leads us to intelligence. Does yeah. it make sense? Yeah. Um, even, like, you know, these things in regards to how we're able to see. Um, there's a rich, I think he was a multi-millionaire. Um, he had a beautiful wife, he's got all the money, he's got the fancy cars, whatever. But he, he was unable to blink. And he was asked the question, yeah, um, if you could do anything with your money, like what, what's the one thing you would buy or you want? Yeah. And it's like, to blink, you know what I mean? Because at the moment he's just putting eye drops and like we don't realize how much of a nuisance it is, bugs flying yeah, in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I would say that even look at, you know, the camels, how they're able to um, retain the water, able to walk in hot sand. Yeah. All of these things is just signs of people to actually see there's too much design for them not to be a designer. Yeah. That's a good argument. Christianity makes that argument too. Mm. So I think, look, we need to, at the moment, I'm united with theists, yeah? <laughs> Until you believe in a God. Once you believe in a God, I'm going to, Split away from my other fears and then okay. um, so promote. To start your life. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, we're going to line up. We're united until you're... It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, until get, we believe. Yeah. And I would say that, look, as an atheist, you're in a sticky situation. Yeah. Because atheism is a claim. So you're claiming there isn't a creator. And I would say the earnest is on you to bring your evidence. So where is your evidence for your disbelief in God or your lack of belief in a... I'm going to put it on you, sir. Yeah. Where's my Asking evidence? me about my four wives. Let my four wives be. <laughs> well, here's a, I mean, here's a few things. Uh, yeah. Like, life's pretty terrible for most people. So okay. when you say there's a purpose, when I look at what life is like for most of humans, I think it's a pretty terrible purpose. Sort of billions of people dying of starvation at a time. I would say you're complaining two different things. Yeah. The problem of evil and purpose. Yeah. I would argue you just hit the nail on the head. You're talking about people starving to death, right? Yeah. In Islam, Islam is based on five pillars. Yeah. I don't know where the camera is. I'm acting like the camera is there. I need to speak into the camera. <laughs> yeah. um, Islam is based on five pillars. Yeah. What do to you or the camera? Right there. I'm gonna speak to you. I'm gonna speak to you. <laughs> Make life easier for me. I wasn't made for this. I was yeah. stuck. Um, yeah. The first one is belief. Okay. One God created everything, um, is independent, doesn't need anything from anyone. And I think maybe I was talking to you about looking at the signs of God. Yeah. Another good argument for God is Tawheed, the definition of God given in the Quran, yeah. Yeah. given by the Prophet Muhammad. So the fact that God's all powerful, so the belief in God. Yeah. Then it's um, Salah, praying, connection with God five times a day. Yeah. And this is the point I want to make with you, zakat. Yeah. is 2.5% of your annual wealth, which is given in charity, is a tax for the rich to give to the poor. Okay. We eradicate poverty. This is the only economical system in the history of humanity that eradicate poverty. But there's still a lot of poverty in Muslim countries. That's because we're not implementing no the laws of God. It's not no one's giving it. We're not following it holistically, does it make sense? So when you look at giving 2.5, who's going to give it? Yeah. Me giving as an individual is not going to work. Yeah. We need a bait al we need an um, authority who keeps it in a place and then distributes it. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have that structure, we don't, we don't have an Islamic state. So has anywhere that been implemented successfully? Yeah, um, in the time of Abdul Aziz, yeah. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, um, we, we eradicated poverty. Okay. Um, this wasn't when Islam was small, like we were kicking around the Persians, we were kicking around the Romans, we had Spain under the Islamic authority, yeah. um, all the way up into Turkey and so on and so forth, and there was no I poor know. people, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm saying that, that that is when we were close to Islam. Now, it's like you have a lot of Muslim countries and yeah. we have the natural resources, yeah. but we're doing silly things. Yeah, some people are flying around on their yachts and uh, planes and stuff. They're, they're having competitions in regards to who can build the tall, tallest building. All the tallest buildings and Muslim countries are like, what are you doing? Yeah. And the funny thing is, you know the Prophet Muhammad? He actually prophesied this would happen. Okay. Can you imagine 1400 years ago, he mentioned that the desert dwellers, the Bedouins, um, in the Arabian Peninsula, they're going to be um, co art competition in regards to who can build the tallest buildings. Wow, that's good. Like Neom. What's that, sir? Like Neom in Saudi. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. This big development? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but then who would have guessed this 1400 years ago? Because if you imagine, like, people living in like mud huts and tents and, do you know what I mean? One, one room buildings, yeah. like houses. So you probably thought it'd be 10 stories or something. <laughs> Not even that. Then they, I would say that because it was divinely inspired. He knew exactly what that meant. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, he probably didn't know exactly what that meant, but yeah. God knew exactly what was meant by that. That's and the it's the benefit not... of forecasting long term, though. You can always say it's going to happen later. Later, later. A couple hundred years. Wait a couple hundred years. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, other prophecies. And the fact of the matter is, you could argue that, okay, all of these prophecies, layer, layer, layer. But what about when it talks about specific subjects and just gets it right? Does yeah, sense? So if, there, if there's any mistakes, yeah. like it's fair enough to say that you're making open-ended guesses 
But when you make categorical statements, then it's still right. Where did the Prophet Muhammad get, get this... Uh, it's throughout say? his lifestyle, oh, revelation. revelation. So over a 23-year 20, 20 period. 23 year okay. period. Okay. And again, that's one of the linguistic miracles, that's one of the yeah. miraculous things. Was he of the Ar no, he no, no. Yeah, yeah, he was, a, he, was a, he was a shepherd. Shepherds. Do you know what I mean? And then what did he do? Like, I'm not going to shy away from it. Like, he led armies. Yeah. And at that, in, within his lifetime, it, wasn't, it didn't expand as much. But then, um, in the time of Umar ibn al Khattab, like, yeah, yeah it was expanded. Do you know what I mean? I think to myself, how is a shepherd? Um, from 1400 years ago, yeah. now has got the most popular name in the world. I was going to say ambitious guy, but I don't think you should say ambitious about it. Yeah. It's not good. How, how, how do you feel? Because a lot of things, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot, lot of the viewers at home are going to um, criticize your sense of humor. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt because I think, because um, I, I get, I get, like your inquisitive nature. The questions are fine, but it's like there's elements of like I don't know. Like, do you, do you have any reasons to be very cynical about the Prophet Muhammad? And then I'll let's see if I can try to. No, I'm not cynical about him. I just uh, I don't find a lot of reasons to believe. Is a challenge. Wait, what? Sorry. I don't find a lot of reasons to believe. So okay. It's, uh, and going back to the problem of evil, right? Yeah. Um, if I was to get rid of evil, very easy for me. It's going to come at a cost. No free will. Yeah. Yeah, you could do it that way. I can do it like that. Yeah. How do you feel? Not good. No. So at the end of the day, you want the cake. Yeah. You're going to keep the cake, but you're going to eat as well. I'm yeah. saying that, look, if you want all the problems, all the evil to go, I'll get rid of it. Yeah. God can get rid of it, but then he'll take away your free will. Yeah. Or... You could voluntarily submit your will to a perfect guidance yeah. that will get rid of all the things, will get rid of poverty, will get rid of rape and X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Does it yeah. make sense? Like I've met so many people um, who are passionate about drinking. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, um, should we ban it? To completely make it disappear? Room one on one. Right. Yeah. And they say, yeah. Okay. Even though they enjoy doing it, but. From coming from a non-selfish perspective, I think that's the right, uh, for, the right choice for society. For society, and and that's it. You realize everything that Islam comes with is the best for society. Um, I think there isn't anything good that that Allah has forbidden. Yeah, everything which is forbidden is bad for you, and everything which you want to do that for you to meet. Not even your basic needs to meet all of your needs. Is there in Islam in the right way? How do you feel about that? Drinking is forbidden? Drinking alcohol is forbidden, yeah. The Quran, are you a drinker? Yeah. Passionate drinker? <laughs> Only on the weekends. Yeah. Um, okay, now, I would say that look, before we look into what's forbidden, yeah, yeah. the main foundation is the belief. Yeah. And then you're going to want to act upon um, the commandments. Yeah. But now it's like you're going to start fasting or doing this or doing that. I'm like, wait, hold up. I'm okay with the fasting. I heard that's good for you. Very good for you. Yeah. Um, I fast because it's the fourth pillar. Yeah. And now science is saying yeah. that 30-day fasting consistently is an amazing detox. Yeah. It kills cancerous cells. Yeah. But I didn't know that. Yeah. They didn't know that 1,400 years ago. But um, potentially is one of the divine benefits that God yeah. done it for. Yeah. Obviously in the Quran it says it's to create God consciousness. So right now I could act like I'm fasting. Even like, oh this guy is so pious, he is Liverpool Street and he's fasting. But you would never know. Well I know it's not wrong about it. No no but you can do voluntary fast. Whenever you want. Yeah. yeah. I but, tried to I had a Muslim boss about ten years ago and I tried to fast with him for a couple of days and it was extremely difficult. A, I would say, you need to know, like, my mom, like, she's an elderly woman, and she's able to fast. Right? And A, it's the motivation, I think, that belief in God. And I think, again, it comes down to practice as well. Does that make sense? Um, anything What's if the there's fifth? a um, Hajj, holy pilgrimage. Ah, you gotta go to um, 
Mecca? Yes, Mecca, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and go the black box, call it the car bar. Um, that was built by Abraham. So again, it's connecting it back to the Abrahamic faith. What? It's the black box? You call it what? Um, the car bar. Car bar. Yeah. So when we pray, it's our Qibla because that's the direction we face. Okay. And it, it unites people and yeah, yeah, I'm going on the 28th of September. Are you? Yeah. Have you been there before? Yeah, 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 many wow. times. I don't know why I told you that. Just come with me. That's exciting. No, normally I take people to the mosque, but with you, because we're in Liverpool Street, we're like, let's go Umrah <laughs> together. Let's go with the pilgrimage. You can just check it out. No, I need uh, to run. Can I, I can keep this? Yeah, keep that. Um, and yeah, I don't know how often we're going to be here. If you're on Saturdays, we're outside Whitechapel. Um, sun Saturdays in... Stratford, okay. Speaker's Corner, okay. there, have the conversation and thanks so much, really appreciate your time. Yeah, Cheers. great to meet you, thanks. Pleasure, you take care. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, lovely conversation. Make dua, da Allah, uh, makes this a beneficial thing. Assalamu alaikum wa